Hi guys, welcome back to the Financial Interest YouTube channel. My name's Dan. So in this week's video, I'm going to cover Phil Town's payback time valuation. And this is the, um, the third way that Phil Town uses to value companies. I've already covered the margin of safety price and also the 10 cap method that he uses. So I'll leave links to those at the end of the video as well and in the description. So you can check those out if you haven't already. So let's get on with the video. So what we're looking at here with the payback time is how many years does it take us to get back our initial investment through the company's free cash flow? So an easy example might be um, if the company's making $10 million uh, a year in free cash flow, and that's going to be the same for the next eight years, then now I want to pay $80 million for that. So I'll get $10 million back in the first year, then $10 million back in the second year, going all the way through the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh year, and into the eighth year. So obviously that's not taking into account any growth, but that gives you just an idea of what you're looking to pay. So you would be prepared to pay $80 million now, knowing that in eight years, all your money is off the table. And that's kind of if you're thinking about it as the owner of the business. And that's always the best way to think about it rather than as a per share basis. So the payback time is based around the price that we would pay if we're looking at private equity. So through research that uh, Phil had done, he found that kind of um, people are prepared to pay eight times the free cash flow to buy a private company. And actually, uh, they're prepared to pay roughly double that to to uh, buy into a public company. So in this case, we're talking about normal standard would be to pay um, 16 times the free cash flow to buy a public company. And the reason people are prepared to pay more for a public company is a couple of things. One is the liquidity, because it's much easier to get in and out of an investment in a public company than it is in a private company, because obviously, um, a private company might behave a little bit more like if you purchase a property because even if you wanted to sell that property you might not be able to do it straight away it might take you a few months to be able to sell the the property and you might still not be able to do that at the price you want anyway so the idea here is that we want to pay um, a fixed amount and get that money back within eight years from the free cash flow so we need to get a couple of different numbers to make this calculation First, we need to know the free cash flow of the company, and then we need to look at a growth rate. So the free cash flow, you can kind of quite easily calculate this by going to the company's cash flow statement, looking at their cash flow from operating activities, and then deducting the capital expenditures, which might also be uh, shown as purchase of property, plant and equipment. So once you kind of subtract that from the operating cash flow, then you're left with a free cash flow. And this is essentially what the company's got to spend on anything they want. They can reinvest it to grow the business more, or they could pay dividends, or they could do uh, share repurchases or anything like that. But that is actually the money that's left after they've paid all the expenses to keep the business running. We'll go and take a look on the screen in a bit and I'll show you Phil Town's actual uh, toolbox, which you can um, you can get a free trial of it. It normally costs $30 a month and that's got a lot of useful um, like data points on there, which you can kind of um, get numbers from for this. So when I'm going to give an example, I'll be actually looking in, in his uh, toolbox. But also he has a free uh, payback time calculator on his website and I'll leave all the links for that stuff um, in the description as well. And he actually also wrote a book called Payback Time. So I'd highly recommend that. That's a really, really good book as well. But the kind of um, the things I'm going to be talking about in this video is mentioned also in the invested book that he did with uh, his daughter, Danielle, as well. And that's what I've based the table on, which you'll see shortly. So we'll go and take a look at a practical example from Facebook now. So here we are in the spreadsheet I made to calculate the payback time. So here in the table, we've got the obviously running down the years. So year zero would be now. So here we need to go and get the free cash flow. Um, for the growth rate, I've just put in an amount of um, 15%. I'm not going to kind of, that's just a kind of arbitrary amount I picked. I'll give some background for that um, shortly, but and then we can see here we've got the expected growth in free cash flow. So what this is, is basically just a free cash flow and then we're 
um, compounding it by 15% each year. And once we populate the numbers, um, that'll all become a bit clearer. And then here we are is a cumulative free cash flow. So this just adds up every year's free cash flow until we get to the um, total free cash flow at the eighth year. And then this will also be our buy price if we were buying the entire company. And you can see that I've already got the shares, which is 2.88 billion shares outstanding and the current uh, share price 332.75. So let's go and uh, actually get the free cash flow number from the trailing 12 months. So here's the result from Facebook's last 10K, which covers the whole of 2020. So the numbers we're looking for here is the net cash from operating activities, which we can see here is uh, 38,747. So that's 38.74 um, billion. And what we need to do here is sub subtract the purchase of property, plant and equipment. And that will give us our free cash flow number. So that's actually uh, 23,632. But what I actually want to do here is to get the trailing 12 months. And obviously we've had another quarter since then. So what I'm going to do is we're going to add the, the most recent quarter. So Q1 from 2021. Just go and look for that here. So here we are for the first quarter of 2021. And the um, cash flow operating activities is there. So that's 12242. And once again, we need to subtract the purchase of property, plant and equipment, which is 4272, which gives us um, 7970. So I'm going to add the 7970 to the 23632. And then subtract the previous quarter from last year. So here we are, we just go to check that. So you can see here that this is the uh, three months ended from last year, so the first quarter of 2020. So I'm just going to remove this amount. So we've got the net net cash from operating activities, which is uh, 11001. And we just need to minus the purchase of property, plant and equipment again, 3558, which gives us 7443. So I'll just show you on a slide now how we came to that number. So we've got the 2020 was the amount of um, free cash flow of 23,632. Then we added on the most recent quarter, which is 7,970. And then we removed the previous quarter from 2020, which is 7,443. And that gives us a free cash flow of 24,159 for the trailing 12 months. So let's jump into this spreadsheet now and we'll put the 24.159. I'll keep that in billions just because it makes it a bit simpler. So we can see here we're in year, year zero. So our free cash flow is 24.16. And then if we grow the 24.16 by 15%, it comes to 27. Grow the 27.78 by 15% 50, and it grows to 31 and so on as we go down there and then we'll see the actual this is the actual growth in the free cash flow and then down this side we're seeing the cumulative free cash flow so obviously once we get to one year we're expecting the 27.78 and then to that we add the add the 31 and then we get to 59 we add the 36 we get to 96 and so on until we get to the um, final year, year eight, and we get to a cumulative free cash flow of 381.37. And just to look at the general uh, trends of Facebook's free cash flow, I'll just jump into another tab because I went and looked back over the over the previous years. So here we can see effectively if year zero was 2012, we can see we can see that then they were making 377 million. And we can see just how much the free cash flow has grown over these eight years. So we've gone here to um, 2 billion, then 3.6, 7, and we kind of jumped all the way here. And this was the um, 2020 free cash flow, which is 23.6 uh, billion. 
and actually this is just kind of showing the more or less the average uh, compound rate that that's been so we've been looking at like a 67.75 uh, compound rate um, actually you like growing year over year so you can see that actually looking back to my um, my sheet here 15 percent is fairly fairly conservative with how they've been able to grow their cash flows previously but obviously the company's scaled up significantly since then so it's kind of um, expected that this the the speed of the growth is obviously going to slow down quite a lot and the reason I've made the Excel sheet is that there is a function in the real one um, toolbox that shows you how to do this and you can just put your numbers in but I always actually like to have the number and figure it out myself so then I can go and compare it so we can see as well that the the free cash flow per share so if we take our free cash flow amount for the trailing 12 months we've got the 24.16 and then if we divide that by the 2.88 billion shares outstanding then we get a free cash flow per share of 8.38 and what i want to do is just kind of verify we're around the the right kind of area with that so normally i'll just go and check out a few other websites just to just to make sure we're kind of on the right lines So here we are in Guru Focus um, and we can see that I've just kind of checked what's their uh, free, um, free cash flow per share. Uh, we can see here that it, uh, according to Guru Focus, free cash flow per share for the trailing 12 months ending in March this year was 8.35. So I'm getting slightly different number, but not not very far out. So that's probably just kind of um, decimals in the number of shares outstanding or the actual free cash flow. But that really is close enough to uh, for us to be able to do the calculation. So I'm kind of happy that uh, my calculations come close there. And another good thing to do is just check out um, the analyst growth estimates. So this is kind of a good point for us to uh, look at what we should be using as a growth rate. So now I'm in Yahoo Finance, obviously on Facebook. Here we can see the the current price at the close of um, close of the market yesterday. So we'll just scroll down, and we've got um, growth estimates towards the bottom, and this is from uh, the analysts. So we can see that they're predicting like an average compound growth over the next five years of 23.7%. But we've got to remember here, we're not looking at, um, we're not looking at five years, we're looking at eight years. So I kind of chose to be more conservative and just keep a 15% growth rate um, for that. So as we go back into this, we can see that our eight year payback time buy price is 132.33 for Facebook, um, which is obviously well outside the current share price, which is 332.75. And the way we got to this price was taking the um, cumulative free cash flow, the 381.37, and then we divide by the number of shares outstanding, and that gives us our um, eight year uh, payback time price. So what I want to do now is jump into the rule one toolbox. So here we are in the rule one toolbox. Uh, we can see here that some of the numbers are different. So I'm just going to change those because our future growth rate we've put down is 15 and we always double to the future PE. Um, my free cash flow per share was 8.38 and then I will submit that and see what it comes back with. So here we are, we've got the, this shows the uh, current stock price and it also shows the, uh, what Phil calls the sticker price, so that's the intrinsic value which we've got here and going from the intrinsic value for the other calculation, which is the margin of safety price. Uh, I've done a previous video on that one, so I'll leave a link to it as well. But we can see here the free cash flow uh, payback time price for eight years is 132.29. 
so that's also very close to what I had. It's one three two point three three. So I'm only like I'm only a few uh, cents out there. So that's like I'm happy enough that that's um, that's an accurate representation. So yeah, so that's kind of the that's how I kind of use the um, use the payback time calculator. I like to always first work it out myself and then um, just go and verify it using using this just to make sure that the numbers are aligned with that. So that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a like and also consider subscribing to the channel as well if you haven't already and you want to see more content like this. Also hit the notification bell so you can get notified whenever I release new videos. I'm also interested to hear any comments that you've got. Um, is this one of the valuation methods you use or perhaps you stick to more of a traditional valuation method like the uh, discounted cash flow analysis? But the kind of way I do it is, is to look at a few different valuation methods because different companies in different industries will always um, work better with certain types of valuation methods. But anyway, it'd be great to hear from you. So let us know in the comments as well about that. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.